welcome to Unapologetically Myself. Oh my god, am I being too loud? Whatever, f*** it. Oh yeah, we got this. Are you guys ready? I just want y'all to start living life. Just be yourself. <laughs> Let's do this, bitches. Welcome back to Unapologetically Myself. I'm your host, Amanda Carluccio. Uh, how are we all doing today, guys? How are we doing? A uh, little recap of my month. I went to go see Justin Timberlake. He was amazing. He sounds just as good as he did like 20 years ago in his in sync era. Uh, era, era. That's right. We had so much fun. It was at Madison Square Garden, which I've never even been to. And I have to say that that stadium was like immaculate, it was super clean, which I was pretty surprised because it's a pretty old stadium, I think, right? And he sounded so good. I knew basically every song except for our, his songs from his new album. And he was he was great. I loved it. Loved every minute of it. Highly recommend going to see JT if you are a sync Justin Timberlake lover. I hope you guys had a awesome July 4th. Also, my mom is downstairs. I'm currently in the loft and I will be interviewing my mother soon. So she's our next guest on the pod. I interviewed my dad and now we're going to have Loretta Carluccio. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. Some of you guys asked to make these longer. And honestly, I feel bad. I'm like, you guys really want to listen to me talk for an hour? I, I tried to keep them under a half hour because I'm like, after like 22 minutes, people start to zone out. And I mean, unless you're doing like a drive, if you're going somewhere like down the shore and you're hitting traffic and you want to listen to me, great. Love that. Love you. Like I know Joe Rogan has like some four hour ones and like, what? What do you talk about for four hours? Because I honestly, I know I can talk a lot, but I don't even know what I would talk about for four hours. But basically when I film these, they take, I have at least maybe I would say an hour and a half of footage and I cut it down to a half hour. And I haven't had the chance to make it an hour because I'm like, everything needs to be cut. So I'm thinking maybe I just need to talk more and talk longer and film for maybe four hours and then we can get a good hour in. But that's a lot. That's a lot during the day. But we'll see. What else happened to me this month? Uh, nothing really exciting happened. I didn't rescue a dog like last month. Uh, you know, it was, it's was. it been a boring month. Other than going to see Justin Timberlake, that's really all that happened. You know, I'm 35. I'm in a relationship, so I don't really have any funny dating stories. But don't you worry. I'm going to have some of my friends on here who are single, and we're going to go through dating stories. Hopefully, we can get like a relationship coach on this podcast, because why not? And I'm going to go through some of my horrifying dating stories because I think that would be hilarious. This month was not, you know, eventful. I didn't really do much. I went to the beach once. Actually, I burnt my cheeks really, really bad. I recommend not wearing a thong if you have the whitest ass in America because that's what I did. And I burnt my butt super, super bad. I would show you, but it's like borderline. It's my ass. So... Yeah, it's a borderline only fans only appropriate. So without further ado, let's get into it, guys. Let's have the one and only my mom, my beautiful mom. I love her so much. Loretta Carluccio on the podcast. Come up, ma. Come on up. She already doesn't want to be here because we had technical difficulties uh, with starting the podcast and the cameras. So she's already, you know, she's in character. And when I mean by in character, she's already pissed off. But we love her. And we're excited. Actually, I did want to start this off by saying that she is the most genuine person I know. And I know that doesn't show through a lot in my videos because she's always yelling at my dad or she's always she's actually really good at acting. Like most of the time I'll just do improv and I'll be like, mom, go. And <laughs> and she just does it. And we're it's done in one take. And we're like, oh, my God, mom, you're pretty good at acting. But I know the genuineness and the niceness doesn't come through in the videos, but she is honestly the most genuine person that I know. Um, she'll do anything for anyone, anyone in my family, my cousins, friends. She's always there for me, and I love her so much. So I'm excited for you guys to get to know her a little better. So let's bring her up. So, Mom, you excited to be on the podcast? Oh, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> She's thrilled, guys. Are you scared? No. You're not nervous? I'm not nervous about what? <laughs> well, welcome to Unapologetically Myself. <laughs> She's thrilled. Okay, so a lot of uh, the followers have a misconception that you are mean all the time to uh, dad. Can uh, yeah, you can, word, bitch, you can say bitch, you can say fuck. <laughs> this is my podcast. You can do whatever you want, mom. 
that I'm a bitch. That's what they think. Yes. Literally, I'm not. Literally? Is that what you think? Yeah. You're literally not. No, I'm not. You think <laughs> I am? Uh, I think you can be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 when you want to be yes that's true um so i have some questions for you okay and then you c- we can get into the thoughts if you have any thoughts for the week the thoughts from the loft that i do that segment thoughts from the loft yeah, do you not listen to my podcast no actually i haven't had a chance <laughs> thanks mom <laughs> <laughs> i listened to the first one but i haven't had a chance honestly i'm so busy with you know Okay. Do you enjoy doing the skits on TikTok and Instagram? Absolutely not. They <laughs> force me to do it. They <laughs> force me to do it. And I can't take it. You can't take oh, it. Because I got so many things to do. And, we got, and then we have a producer or a cameraman or woman, I should say, that tells you to do it one way. And then five minutes later, you got to do it another way. And then she doesn't tell you what to do. And oh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> A.K.A. the producer is me. Some things I enjoy. You I, do. But OK, my mom is I don't very have tolerance is for not it. like <laughs> my dad at all. No, I am not. We're complete opposites. My dad loves doing them. Yes. Yeah, but you don't have like if you really didn't want to do it, you wouldn't do it. You do like doing some of them, no? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. How do you stay calm when Gary gets excited and goes off the deep end? Oh, I just walk away. <laughs> or shut tell him to shut up. It's ridiculous. He gets on your nerves. But you, you love think? him. Yes, yeah. I truly love him. Yes. <laughs> Loved him since I first saw him in August of 81. Oh, my God. 1981. We know the date. Uh, okay. So that brings me to my next question is how did you meet Gary? And was it love at first sight? Uh, you know the answer to this. Oh, well, yes. I know. But go ahead. Do you want to tell the I story? Was, yes. I was walking down the street with his um, sister. At the time, I did not know it was his a sister and we turned the corner we were going to her house for the first time i turned the corner and he was playing basketball he had a shower cap on yes, mind he you had a because shower he had cap a lot on, of hair he had a lot of hair which uh, he does not now and he had shorts on and a and a well people call it a wife beater a t-shirt Gold i turned the corner and i grabbed my girlfriend's hand her name is joanne i said joe who is that guy she goes what guy i go that guy playing basketball that's my brother. I said, oh, my God, I'm in love. <laughs> it was in a nanosecond. When I say a nanosecond, it was a nanosecond. A nanosecond, guys. And I said, oh, my God, I'm going to marry him. That was it. That was it. And unbeknownst to me, he had a girlfriend at the time, but they were in the midst of a breakup. So I was okay. the lucky one. So you married your best friend's brother. Yes. Which is crazy. Yeah. I feel like that doesn't happen a lot. No, it doesn't. Probably. But although, like Aunt Joanne, I f- still feel like you two aren't friends. Like we they were don't, friends. They don't have any thing in common. <laughs> no, they don't no. really don't. So you met him in high school. How old were you? I was just going into high school. I just graduated. Oh, and he grade, was. And he was a sophomore. Oh, okay. Did he carry my books? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what was Dad like in high school? Your father was. A tough. Everybody respected your father. Okay. Because he beat up this one guy. Because the guy, <laughs> the guy looked at his girlfriend the wrong way at the time. But it wasn't you. No. It was somebody else. Yeah. He beat him up. He hit him. That was. He hit him. <laughs> Guys, he hit him. So you were high school sweethearts. You went to prom together and everything, yes, we right? Yes. Went to junior prom, senior prom, his senior prom, his junior prom. Nice. You can look at me. You don't have to okay. look at the camera. I'm, I wasn't really looking at the camera. I, well, I don't know what you. you were looking at because it wasn't me. <laughs> I was looking at the machine. Shut up. Okay. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Love you. Yeah, I love you. Okay. So what advice would you give to a new mother that wants to have a close relationship to their child like ours? Mm, that's a good question. We got time. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just be honest with them. Talk about everything with your daughter. Yeah. There's no reason that you shouldn't, you know. Um, yeah, I, so talk, that's... We, you confided in me for everything. A little everything. TMI sometimes, but what are you going to do? You got to listen and hopefully you can answer them and help them out. Yeah, I I mean, my mom's my best friend. You're my best friend. Aww. I tell you everything. Yeah, yeah but how together. can you like guarantee? Like I always worry about... There's no about, guarantee in No, I, I get that. She makes it clear. <laughs> but <laughs> like, okay, when I have a child, like how, what is your best advice to me to like have the relationship that me and you have? Listen to them. Okay. Don't, you know, just listen to them uh, and talk with them. You yeah. Know, if they're in their room by themselves, what are you doing? 
You know, uh, sit down and talk to them. And right. don't let them be alone all the time. Get them involved in sports and activities mm-hmm. and dance. Like Amanda went to dance yeah, that's just important. about every day after school, Saturdays and Sundays. I went with her. I think extracurriculars are really good. Uh, like I was good. always doing something. Yes. And this way it keeps them out of like, I don't trouble. know, trouble and, <laughs> you know, with a bad crowd. Okay. So the next question. So you were diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2017. 2017. Right. Can you explain what this is and how it's affected you? Well, right now you can see I'm shaking a little. I don't know why. How I d- detected it was. Um, well, first of all, what is it? It's a neurological. A neuro- neuro- we yeah, really no, can't can say, say this, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a, it's a neurological, neurological disease. disease. Okay. Okay. We and, got that. Um, in my case, it's a progression that's slow. And Thank some people God. have it that it's quicker than others. Yeah, like Michael J. Fox, his yeah. was quicker, Quick, is quicker. quicker. My hand was shaking, my right hand. And I thought nothing of it. And my father, uh, about seven years ago, eight years ago, um, said his dying words to me were, please have your hand checked. I said, okay, Dad. And all along, I, my legs would shake occasionally. I thought nothing of it. So it took from 17 to, mm, I don't know, 20. What, 2017 to 2020 to, to get diagnosed? 20, it's hard to diagnose. Like, what exactly is it? Your uh, dopamine level is decreasing. And, it, and that's, that's what causes, causes tremors your, in your hand, right. and it could start on one side. It could start, start with the on hand. One side, you can go on two sides, and then it, it can, can start, and then it can go to the legs, then it can yeah. go to the other side, yeah. right? A lot of things, and a then, lot of components. It affects. It, it can cause depression. It can cause like, loss of smell, loss of sm- and s- lethargic. Right? I've noticed you've been like yeah, like tired out of it, tired a lot. a lot. Some of you guys see the skits. Yeah. And she looks almost like she doesn't want to be there, which <laughs> which, we, I don't. which we learned she doesn't. <laughs> but also, it's a little bit of the Parkinson's yes, too, like because yes. it's that almost somber face. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you it affects your face, right? No, I I know it's it affects movement, mm-hmm. but it also affects um, your mental health. Yes. And how do you feel? Like, are you? How, I how feel, feel good. And I will tell you this. If anybody out there knows somebody that has Parkinson's or they themselves have Parkinson's, box. Rock steady boxing. It's a godsend. Yeah. So my mom actually does go boxing every Monday. I, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. And I, I box for an hour on those days. And the days that I'm not there, I tell my husband, put the gloves on, and I box with him as much as I can. Yeah, they box together. And It's uh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> And um, it, any any type of exercise, but boxing is the biggest plus. So do boxing because it helps with the movements in your hands and it and, helps with the tremors, right? Yeah, well, th- it, it, that helps and I get Botox. My neurologist gives me Botox injections. Okay, but wait, she never has gotten Botox in her forehead. No, only that, not on my face. I don't get that. That's all cosmetic. This is for she's, helping with my muscles. She gets Botox in her hand. And my legs, your legs and your neck, neck, because it paralyzes the muscle, which stops her tremors, which is really interesting. Yeah. And it it's, is. It's awesome. Cause so I can tell like she'll start to shake more and then she's due for her Botox appointment, mm-hmm. but they for give you how many units do they give you? 200 units in, in what each? No, in no, no, no. At 200 total. Oh, 200. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. I think. Cause mm-hmm. I only get 17 in my forehead. Yeah, so there's your comparison. Well, there you, there <laughs> there you, you go. go. <laughs> so that's a that's a lot of money too. Does insurance pay for that? It pays for part of it, but I have to put out about thousand dollars. What medication are you on for that? For Parkinson's, I'm on oh, three, three medications, four different medications. Oh wow! Yeah. And you take that every morning, morning and at eight o'clock and one o'clock. What do you fear about it? About the medication? No, about the the disease. Parkinson's. I just hope it's very, very, very slow moving. Mm-hmm. That's about it. And But that's what they say it is. The doctor, mm-hmm. ha- thank mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're in good spirits. You look great. Yeah. Your forehead looks phenomenal. <laughs> Guys, look at this forehead. I know if you're listening in the car, you can't oh, see it. But if you're watching, Lord, well, you watch out. out. Let it, show them. Out. Show them. Get out of here. It looks amazing. All right. <laughs> okay, anyway, she has not one wrinkle, guys. Okay? Oh, not one. Not bad for what? How old am I, man? 
You don't tell me. <laughs> Stop. I'm my father's daughter. It is. You are sixty five, sixty six, yeah, sixty seven. Yeah. Oh, you're getting there. I am the only child. Yes, you. And are. And everyone asks, "Oh, why are you the only child? You have such a well, close family." Why didn't your mom have more kids? At the age of 28, I was pregnant and I had a miscarriage. Okay. Then I couldn't get pregnant. I had gone to the doctor and long story short, I had endometriosis. So I got yeah. pregnant again at 32. They said, it's, it's going to be hard for you to get pregnant. All right. That's fine. Well, I'll do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And at 32, I was pregnant again and I had Manda. Yeah, so and it was, was difficult. A actually a miracle baby because they didn't expect me to have any children. Well, I feel like back then endometriosis was uh, like they a new disease. Yeah, they didn't they know that much, much about it. it. So what is right. it? The lining of the uterus is outside or something like that? Yeah, I'm not really I'm not 100% sure. Percent sure. sure. How did you know that you had endometriosis? I had very, very bad pains in my abdomen. and so But like bad, when? Just, I was at work and I got to scream. Like excruciating, excruciating pain. pain. Were you on your period? No. no. So it was just random, like throughout and the then day. I went home. I went to the doctors and they said, you know, they found out I'm, I had endometriosis. They wanted to do um, hysterectomy. I said, no, 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 no. Uh, because I was bleeding so much. And I said, no. And then he, she, he goes, one day you're going to bleed a lot and it's not going to be able to stop. You're going to start to hemorrhage. So that didn't happen. I got pregnant. I had the bait, had you. Mm -hmm. And then a couple years later, I did start to hemorrhage, and they had to do a hysterectomy. How old were you when you had the hysterectomy? Uh, you were four, so I was 32, four, 36. Okay. So you would know if you had endometriosis because ha you have excruciating pain, pain. You have really heavy periods, yes. right? Yes. I always it. worry because I'm like, oh, well, what if I have it? Because there is only one way to test it, right? And right. you have to go through the belly button. Right. But like, yeah, I've so never gotten that, but I guess I would know because I haven't gotten excruciating pains or yeah, anything really. Know. I mean, it actually goes through your back, up your rectum. Oof, that sounds horrible. All right. So you want to do the thoughts from the loft with me? What is the thoughts from the loft? <laughs> well, you obviously <laughs> don't listen to my podcast. I have time with everything she going on. She doesn't have on. time, guys. She well, has no with... job. But I do a segment. I'll let you know every, <laughs> every podcast it's called thoughts from the loft and i want to do a jingle but haven't decided on what yes, the jingle is going to be with that. i will oh. um and it's just basically the thoughts that i've thought about throughout the month okay, okay. so now i want you to sit and think while i'm doing my first thought and right. you come up with some thoughts and we'll talk oh. about them okay what's well, about you just in general anything in life if you have something that bothers you a pet peeve anything well, my first one, and I wanted to bring this up with you. Have you seen the docuseries Dancing with the Devil on Netflix? No. Okay. I don't even have time to watch TV. <laughs> Guys, she doesn't have time. She has no job. Oh, no job. It's about two TikTok stars, Miranda and Melanie Wilking, and they're sisters. And they started off on TikTok doing dances together, like similar to what I started, just like doing dances. They taught them. Very close family. Two sisters, mom and dad. The mom and dad would get into some of them with them. Super, super close. The one sister, Miranda, is now in, is what they call a cult in LA called 7M. And if you watch it, she slowly like distanced herself from the family. And they were very, very close. And there was at one point she had messaged her parents and was like, I, I can no longer speak with you. Like, uh, I, yeah, you were talking yeah. about this. Now yeah. I'm saying here, Thinking like, could you imagine if I text you or called you and I, I was have like, to beat the shit out of you? That's ridiculous. <laughs> like as a Italian mom, oh, I don't think that would fly with no, you. No, it wouldn't. So well, like, I don't understand. But also, Why did she get involved I think in this cult. I don't think she meant to. I think she kind of got brainwashed. And this is why they made the docu series because the father and mother are like beside themselves and they they're and grab looks, your kid and beat the shit out of her this is ridiculous <laughs> i really hope she comes home because i've seen it and it's like it's sad but i was thinking I'll myself like if i was her. in that situation and i told you like mom i can't talk to you anymore <laughs> what would you do first of all i'd say why and you tell me you get involved with cold I was, no you're not no no but she doesn't think it's a cold like yeah. It is. When I you know, distance but, yourself from your family right. or anything like that, there's something wrong. Exactly. But she doesn't see it like that because she's so brainwashed. <sighs> I, mean, 
I, I just don't understand somebody how somebody gets brainwashed like that. I'm sorry, I don't. I know, I know, but that's why I'm saying, like, what would you do if I said that to you? I'd just grab you and you'd be home. But you, you'd have to fly to L.A. I'd fly. Yeah, you'd fly? Yeah, I'd fly. <laughs> She'd fly, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, please. So when you're loading the dishwasher, you have always taught me to put the utensils upright. So the forks and knives go upright right, so they get cleaned. Right, supposed to go down. What? You told them? I no, know, you that's told so, me up. That's the way I put them. But they're you literally because the knives should go down. The forks should go down. But Who you cares? have always told me to put I them up. I put them up. That's what I do because I think it cleans it better when it's up. Well, yeah, I do too. That's why I put them up. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, I mean, this. My, me and my friends were talking about this. And oh, the we, stupid little things you talk about. Yeah, well, we got into a heated argument because I'm like, no, they should be up, so they need to be cleaned. It doesn't matter which And my mom go. is right, okay? No, I'm not. I'm not always <laughs> right. Yeah, That's the way I do it. But when you're talking to your friends, your mom's right. Do you have any thoughts? Okay, toilet paper roll. Oh, crap. When you put... Oh, crap. When you put the toilet paper on, is it on the over. outside or under? It's over. It's over. Right. Now, why is that correct? That's just the way it is. I don't know if it's <laughs> correct or not. You can put it any way you want. It's just <laughs> the way it is. That's the way it is in the oh. Carluccio household. So if you come over, it better it be do- over. It doesn't matter because when your father puts it on, he puts it anyway. If he puts it on. He doesn't put it on. That's exactly right. <laughs> what is one piece of advice you can give to me for in life right now? Enjoy life because it's too short. Okay. It really is. Well, cheers to that. I wish we had some Prosecco. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mom. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We will see you August 13th. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Wave bye, Mom. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Louder. Bye. Louder. Bye. Bye. Bye, <laughs> bye guys. La, 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 la.